All right, let's do this shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got questions from people, so. Uh, we got questions from people. Question number one. What song was the most ominous slash dark meme behind it? Man. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. No, man. I would say Judy's probably does. It's one of the darkest, I would say. That Lyrically definitely. wise, like what it's about, like what I experienced with it. I would say that's probably the darkest. What song is the most challenging to make? Oh, shit. <laughs> Plin. Yeah. Plin, Plin was a bitch, man. Plin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, literally, we uh, had like five different versions of Plin. We finished Plin the day of yeah. the album release. Yeah, he literally recorded the vocals to Plin, like, what, at, like, 1 a.m.? Yeah, on the day before the album was released. Yeah. How did you come up with the band name? In 2014, I made a list of prefixes, and then I made a list of suffixes, and I just kind of, like, did crisscross. First, the band, it was called, like, Den Phonic. D-I-N Phonic. But then, like... Demphonic just sounded so much better. Demphonic motherfuckers. <laughs> Which bands influenced your creation process and where did the idea of recording on cassette tape come from? Just like the idea of good music existing in the world in general is enough to influence us to want to do the same. Yeah. And actually for the tape thing, we really started doing that because it challenged us to like be a better band. Yeah. With tape you can't like you know, do a bunch of punch-ins and edits and all that shit. It's like you have like one take and we've always kind of been that way. It's all real. And it just sounds badass. Yeah, it sounds really, it sounds really good. Tape kind of just mixes itself. Learn to Swim says, what was the first song that you guys recorded? Well, the first song that Demphonic recorded was Challenger. Yeah. But that was before Austin was like here. First song I recorded was Queen Yield. <clears throat> Queen was Yo. that before K Drama or no? It was Queen no, Yo. yeah, yeah. It was Queen Yo, and then K Drama came like a month later. Really? No, dude, it was. It was K Drama. It was K Drama. It was K Drama. Oh, I was like, it, wait. it was fucking K Drama, dude, because Queen Yield came way after. And remember all it, those it tapes did. of us? Yeah, all those tapes of us writing K Drama. We didn't have anything like that, but Queen Yo. Queen Yield was the last song we did for Nurse. I think I came up with the <clears throat> drum groove as, uh, uh, of Queen Yield like on accident. I think Queen Yield was like a fuck up. Yeah. And and, and Brandon was like, "Hey, do do that again." And then we kind of like built on. I, I I'm pretty sure that's how it went. I probably. Think. Yeah, I think it was K Drama. No loser, Rick. Are you guys up to gigging down in Mexico City? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Charles M. Drummer says. How did you and your drummer meet each other? <laughs> Where's my phone? Let me pull it up. <laughs> nah, I can't do that. I don't have any Wi-Fi. His sister knew me from school. My sister was going to ask you to play drums for her band. Yeah. I was like, what's this dude's name? And she was like, Austin. And I was like, give me his Facebook. And I looked up the band he was playing for, and I listened to their shit they were recording, and I was like, uh-uh, dude. I'm messaging this fucking dude. I sent you a message. I said, fuck yeah. We set up the day for me to come down and I guess audition or whatever. And it was on the Tuesday. I was still in school. I ditched school. And I showed up and I'll never forget it. This motherfucker answered the door with uh, <laughs> mac and cheese and like messed up hair. I was like, oh, dude, you got messed up hair too. <laughs> <laughs> and then, dude, like, that was it. And then we found out, you know, like we live 10 minutes from each other. Like, super close. It's just, it, dude, that it all worked out. It all worked out. PRXW says, what is your personal favorite song you have made in this band? The song that, that we just released in one. I'm really passionate about that song. I love that song. I, th I think that could be my, my favorite. I like High School Nightmare. I've always liked that song. Hard Hospital. I love Hard Hospital. I don't know. Fucking. I have to think about that one a little more. Fixer says, how did you write and get inspired for Posture 2? It's a masterpiece. It actually, I was at the airport and I was waiting on my flight and that riff came in my head. 
And I was like, how many ways can you fuck around with like the the rhythm? You could either play it like halftime, like a halftime shuffle, or you could. We were just figuring out all different ways to like play grooves around the same riff in different time signatures. That's how Posture Two kind of came up. Razorblade Kiss asks, "Do you guys have merch?" And where would I be able to get some if you guys do? Dymphonic.bandcamp.com slash merch. We'll put the link in the description so you can find it. Could you guys do a DAW session video where you briefly break down the recording and mixing of one of your songs? Oh, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be cool. In February 2021, you guys did a live playing Mega Shape for the first time. Then on Horrorplex release, I noticed the song intro was shortened. Dude, I have a question for you, man. Like, uh... How the fuck do you like even remember that? Like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was the flow of the record. Yeah. We'll sit in the room and listen to the whole thing and like if something feels too long or like we'll either cut it or maybe add more later. So that's probably what happened. Jenny ninety five HM when European tour. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Oh, man, I wish today. I, I wished right now. I wish we were leaving. In a minute, man. Listen, we're like, gonna do it, and we're proclaiming it right fucking now. We're going to tour Europe. Yes. You know, I did a tour in Europe as a drummer a couple of years ago, and on every wall of every green room in Europe, I wrote Dymphonic, like, 2024 or some shit. I just made up a future date to manifest that shit that we're fucking coming. So we are. All right? All Speak right. it into existence. We will tour Europe. And whenever we do... One of y'all go and clip this part of this YouTube video and say, look, they fucking said they were going to do it, and now they're doing it. They're fucking doing it. They're fucking it. doing it. Nick asked, how have you guys gotten through the creative differences and stayed together for so long? Man. Bands have creative differences? Yeah, that's, that's the thing. I didn't know that. I can honestly say something. Say it. I'm going to honestly say something. Say it. Be honest. Just... Just say <laughs> This is the most honest I've been, like, you know, all day. Like, there's never been a fucking creative difference. There hasn't been. Not one time. We trust each other's input, and we both know Dymphonic so well that creative differences just don't exist. We have never argued about anything musically, and we already made... How many albums, how many songs, how many things have we done together? Fuck time. So the point is, is that whenever you are being completely selfless with your band and you're making music for your band and you know what your band is, what you're creating doesn't come from a place of selfishness. Like, oh, I want to play this riff because I want to fucking play it. That's how they break up a fucking band. Like, It's like, you got to make music for your band. Imagine that we're making fucking hamburgers, right? I grill the meat, he puts the bun on, and serves it on a plate. I know that no matter what I do, my job is to create a burger at the end of the day, right? And like, I do my job, he does his. If we respect our product, then we'll never have a creative difference, because like, we know what our mission is. We know what our objective is. And that's how we've always thought about Dymphonic since we started. And that's why we don't really argue about shit we yeah. just we just both do our own thing and like we know if it's right or wrong last one will you guys ever release that hidden dymphonic song from the live south by southwest 2019 show it's an amazing song i'll tell you something it already is <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's out there you just have to fucking it, find you, it you gotta find it it's hidden somewhere on the darkness of the internet Yes. We check the views. People have listened to it. It's hidden and you have to find it. Yep. And not to give anything away, but we have a lot of shit that's hidden out there that almost no one has found yet. That's just part of what we do. We hide a bunch of shit yeah. and like we put it out there and it's yet to be found. So happy hunting. Thank you all very much for submitting your questions. We yeah. had a lot of fun answering them. Like, we should do this again in the future. Yeah. Because we get a lot of questions, and we just wanted to, like, formally answer them. We're having fun, man. We enjoy what we do for you guys, and that's why we're doing it. We're doing it for y'all. You know, we want to deliver music that you guys enjoy, and, you know, we value y'all. So thank y'all very much, like, for your support. Thank you for listening. Fuck thank yeah. you for... <clears throat>
the comments, just the feedback, everything, man. It like that's why we do it. So, fucking thank you, seriously. This has been Drama Face Recording News. Drama Face Recordings News. Ha 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 ha!